it says, answer below questions using the relationship between temperature and microscopic kinetic energy. And um, this is where a lot is really hidden into the, um, into the hint. So let me go to the hint and load up what the hint says. So what the hint says for question 10 is um, it links you to a different uh, section of the textbook. It doesn't link you to section 2.3, which is the, what we were looking at earlier. It links you to section 2.2. <laughs> um, section 2.2 is where we do the kinetic theory of um, gas and use that to kind of derive ideal gas law. And we have this beautiful relationship between what we call average kinetic energy and uh, kind of macroscopic quantities of a gas. So this is the average kinetic energy per molecule and it relates to temperature in a beautiful, simple way. Now, um, what I have to kind of sweep under the rug is that um, if you heard me describe the diatomic molecule carefully, that rotational kinetic energy it's also kind of technically kinetic energy. So <laughs> what we are distinguishing for question 10 is uh, um, here we are just uh, talking about average translational kinetic energy. We are ignoring the rotational part. As long as we agree to ignore the rotational part, this is perfectly applicable to everything, including the atomic gases. Um, but you have to remember while for monatomic gases, they don't really have rotational kinetic energy, the atomic gases can have rotational kinetic energy and that enters into the specific capacity. So for the purpose of question 10, I'm only going to deal with translational kinetic energy, which means I can use this formula. So let me use the formula to answer the question and we'll just leave it there without, you know, lawyering over what microscopic kinetic energy means. Um, so here, uh, what I'm saying, we will um, say we agree this means is microscopic translational kinetic energy. Okay, so the average uh, microscopic um, as average translational kinetic energy in joules of nitrogen molecule at room temperature um, is uh, kinetic energy of, uh, so yeah, I have to do this calculation. Does the hint give me Boltzmann constant or am I gonna constantly have to look it up? Uh, yeah, it doesn't give me. All right, so I have it here. So let me just uh, um, use this here. So what it is is, oh, the expression was pretty simple. Uh, let me, well, let me copy it from here. Three halves kVT. And having done question 12, you can, average kinetic energy is three half kVT. Having done question 12, you can associate this with the degree of freedom. So this is the degree of freedom that corresponds to the translational degrees of freedom. Um, so at room temperature, 20 degrees C. So this is where you have to be careful. This has to be in Kelvins. So this means my temperature is 293 Kelvin. And when I say Kelvin, notice how I don't say degrees because Kelvin, unlike a degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, it's not an arbitrary unit. It's uh, something that is actually anchored in physical basis uh, with the absolute zero Kelvin meaning something. So with the Kelvin, it's just Kelvin. It's one of the actual units, unlike a degrees C and degrees Fahrenheit, which are kind of arbitrary units that people made up. Zero degrees C doesn't mean anything fundamental. So, uh, so let me plug in the numbers. Um, so this is kind of a number plugging question. I just don't want you to do that for A so that, um, so that you get some sense for these very small numbers and know how to type it into the my open math as you do it. So um, looking at the constant there, I'm calculating on my calculator, three halves 
um, KBT, so 1.38, let me just do one more significant figure, one times 10 to the power of minus 23 times the temperature, which was 293 Kelvin. Um, so 293 equals that. Do I have a function here where that turns it into something more reasonable? I might not. So right under scientific mode, uh, I'm just going to have to count. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So six point zero seven times ten to the minus twenty-one Kelvin. I mean uh, joules uh, per molecule. So six point oh seven. Point oh seven times ten to the minus twenty one joule per molecule. Um, so let me. So in the in my open math, the easiest way to enter this would be six point oh seven, and using the E notation, E uh, minus twenty one. That uh, this single letter E already means times ten to the power of. So let me put that in. Uh, 6.07 e minus 21. So uh, let me also demonstrate uh, the kind of the tolerance thing. So all the questions are coded in with about 1% tolerance. So like you can be off here. In fact, if I round it up to two significant figures, it will still grade it as correct. And that's because for this particular number, um, even two significant figure has an error that's less than 1%. But if you want to ensure that your rounding error will always be less than 1%, you should use three significant figures. So, so yeah, um, um, this thing is, yeah, so it's a tolerant of um, kind of case errors. You can use lower case technically, but I don't think it, uh, um, the way the question type is set up, it won't let you do this, I think. Let me just double check. Yeah, it doesn't let you do this. Um, so uh, most of the questions I will give you the input hint. So here, you know, you follow the input hint to put it in this form. Or, you know, you can type in the, the you know, 20 some number of zeros that you saw. All right, uh, let's keep going here. What is the average kinetic energy in joules of hydrogen atoms on the 5,000 degrees surface of the sun. So it's the uh, same equation here. Do I need to do this? Um, this is a more of a number sense question. And I'm deliberately changing between the types of gases here because the key point here is that a lot, what you're saying in chapter one and two, what type of gas um, you have almost doesn't matter. That's the beautiful thing about the theory of ideal gas that a single theory just explains so many different types of gases as long as you can ignore the interaction between gas molecules. So let me, using the exact same equation that I used before, let me just uh, plug in the numbers. So um, it's gonna be um, three halves times, I'm eventually going to memorize this number, but I haven't yet. So let me, uh, one point, where's my KB? Oh, there's 381 times 10 to the power of minus 23 times the temperature, which was, uh, let me do it here. Um, so 5,000 degrees C, so it should be, 5,273 um, Kelvin. And yeah, and this uh, part will be big enough that if you neglect it, your error will be uh, um, greater than 1%. So that gets me that answer. And you can actually enter that too. Let me just uh, do that just for kicks. Oh. So 
So it's gonna enter that. I'm just gonna have to count out the zeros correctly. 0 0.00, 0, 0, 0, 0. It's gonna be so. Can I do copy and paste? Okay. Um, the, the question is uh, agnostic on the specific form you use. So that's fine. And um, so 400,000 Kelvin, I think at that point it's now high enough that I can neglect to 273 Kelvin. Oh, and that's uh, also given in Kelvin already, so I don't have to add anything. So for that, it's gonna be three halves times 1.381 times 10 to the power of minus 23. Did I remember? Ugh. I might have remembered it correctly, but I typed it in incorrectly. So 1.381 times 10 to the power of minus three. Let me just double check. Yes, 1.381 times 10 to the power of minus 23 um, times that large number. Um, so times four times the 10 to the power of five equals that, I'll, I'll just do copy and paste. And I guess uh, the, you know, you're not, I mean, there's some, I think if you express it in scientific notation, you do get a more of number sense, but I think there uh, it, it's uh, better to do the calculation manually by hand. Uh, me using calculator kind of is more counterproductive here. I guess the point is the numbers here don't, uh, you know, if these numbers um, seem to kind of distant from the normal numbers we use to form intuitive feel about it, that's fine. Um, for people, people who deal with this, they actually use a, a non-SI unit that's quite popular called the electron volt. And we'll probably talk about electron volt units at some point in the semester. Uh, we, we won't be using that unit too much it gets used to more in physics 4C, but it, the, you know, the fact that these numbers are very far from intuitive numbers, that um, if you are learning that, that's one thing <laughs> to worth learning if you're answering this question. 